We have, oh, Slam Jam Nike Blazers. These look so good. I think they came out, um, the original ones, I think, came out maybe a couple of years ago. There was a white pair I remember seeing before. As you guys are aware, um, Slam Jam, are, are they Milan-based? I'm going to say Milan without looking at it. What, are they Milan? I think it might be Milan. I'm not too sure. Um, Italian-based um, retail store. I only, I knew about Slam Jam mostly because of Good Hood. No, mostly sort of Good Hood. Mostly because of um, Hideout back in the day. I'm pretty sure the hideout people were quite close with the people over at Slam Jam because mostly because some of the stuff that was getting imported or getting sent to the UK was probably then getting sent to Slam Jam. So a lot of cross pollination there. I feel the Slam Dad, the Slam Jam, Slam Dad good dude is quite um, entrenched in the scene. He's well known around people. I'm pretty sure I've seen all the regular um, scene people pop over to the store and hang out there. They seem to do some really cool activations as of late. I remember they did a thing with Heron and Virgil. They did some other things with Jerry Lorenzo. They seem to have used their space as a real, like, kind of portal into the kind of youth culture in and around that area where the shop is. And by and large, I think nowadays you're seeing a lot of the retail stores and streetwear really expand what it means to be a retail store. No one's just, like, you know, keeping it to a brick and mortar store where you're just kind of buying brands. They're using it as a platform to showcase new talent to take on new collaborations, to maybe introduce new products, to, again, uh, be a voice, a, a, a mouthpiece, a platform for their local area, but also take their brand international. You're seeing a lot of pop, you're, doing, you're seeing a lot of shops doing pop-ups in other countries, which is a really cool um, idea. You know, you might go there and take your some of your top brands who are local and take them to a new market, or you might use that opportunity to go to a new market to kind of get other kids to come out and basically spread the message. And especially nowadays with like, you know, tier zero trainers and hype releases of of clothing there's only a certain amount of stores that have those kind of items anyway so in order to kind of make sure you garner you know trust and a connection because especially people in street where we're loyal right if you do us if you do us wrong obviously everyone's gonna you know there's certain brands i will never wear because i think the people that own that are cunts but for the most part if you're a good person and you are if you're a brand that people resonate with especially in the streetwear community, people will stick with you, you know, through come hell or high water. So it's a good idea that Slam Jam are kind of expanding their, you know, portal and taking it international. And um, this is their second collaboration. I think so. And there's that blazer. I'm pretty sure they did a white one. It's Slam Jam Nike blazer class of 997, uh, dressed in black. And the, the thing I like about it is most, of course, is the black and white shoes. So, you know, I'm always going to be down for it. Me and black and white shoes go together like, you know, whatever. Um, we just go together so the thing i like about it the most is that it's black and white obviously so you've got the white sole black upper with a white swoosh um it's a classic 1970 or it's a classic 1970 blazer shape um so it's got the little front lip at the front if you remember the stushy blazer back in the day not the blazer they have now where it's sort of like completely chamfered it's got the little bit of the lip at the front which is nice and it's got a little bit of the um i'm gonna call it the oddy the ollie pads on the, on the left on the outside edges of the shoe the little strips on the side but they're probably not all your patches they're probably something else but i like the overall shape again if i if my feet were weren't as fat as they are now i'd definitely wear these like most often than not i'd probably wear these over wearing like a pair of combo 70s i just think the shape looks better i think how the swoosh sits on the side of the shoe looks really cool but the, talking about the swoosh the thing i like the best about them is that on the instep the swoosh is upside down now these came before the obviously the travis scott jordans and they came, I think, just after the Off-White 10 collab collaboration. So some people might get a bit bored with the whole upside down and back way front swoosh stuff. But I'm not. I still think it looks crazy cool, crazy awesome. It reminds me of that. What was that Nike shoe back in the day the skate brand did where they kind of cut off the Nike swoosh? And they put a banana next to it. I think maybe that might have been during the era when skate shops were opposed to Nike SBs. And didn't like the fact that Nike SB was basically, you know... Uh, twisting the arms of skate shops to make sure they only carried they took if yeah i remember there was a time where nike sb were very um mafia like in a way that people bought their shoes you couldn't buy you couldn't buy the hype ones if you went if you wanted to buy the hype ones you had to buy the complete inline collection and i think the inline collection is basically all the black and white shoes so you had to buy the dunk dunk low dunk dunk mid dunk high um all the janowskis like every single shoe the thing is about 10 shoes in nike sb's mainline collection that comes in black and white every season and you have to buy all of them plus however many you have to, you have to basically a minimum you have to buy before you are allowed to get the hype the kind of tier zero kind of hyper strike shoes so i think i remember during the era some brand decided to take the swoosh off a shoe i'm pretty sure i'm not talking out of turn and they took it and they put a banana next to it on the side of it i remember that was that was a big deal i was like that was, so that, that kind of reminds me of this sort of thing you know like not not taking your shoes too seriously flipping it around you know having a bit of fun of it and again 
like I mentioned before, I'm happy about this era of collabs. It's like, you know, the collabs this, this, in this era aren't as crazy as they were back in the day. You know, nowadays, like, you can, you know, nowadays you can tell what a clock collaboration looks like. Now, yeah, nowadays the clock collaboration sticks out a lot, right? Back in the day when I used to buy a lot of sneakers, the clock collaboration was just like, it would kind of disappear into the background. It wouldn't be that big of a deal because everyone was doing these fucking crazy paint by number colorways. Nowadays, it seems like brands, even if they only get one opportunity to collaborate with Nike or Adidas or whatever it may be, they take the opportunity to actually do something they actually want to wear, like something that they're actually passionate about. They go to the archives, they maybe stick to models that's not that popular. I think of like a Martin Rose and her shoe that she put out. Do you know what I mean? I like that brands nowadays aren't just going for the, you know, the 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 easy low hanging fruit, right? An Air Max, an Air Jordan One. They're going for like crazy shoes that maybe won't stand the test of times in terms of trend, but something that the designer themselves actually wanted to do themselves, right? And I think this is what you're seeing with this sort of collaboration. Because if you're a slam jam, you could have done whatever you wanted. You could have, you know, I'm pretty sure the Blazer has maybe, um, I wonder what the collection is with the Blazer with the shop as well, but it's just an interesting way to do it. Um, I like I like the shoe, upside down swoosh on the inside, on the instep, sorry, and then you've got class and the 997 on, on the back tab. And then to make it even better, and I think this is what actually got me hyped about the shoe, is this cool little um, video for they're gonna what they're they gonna do they're gonna release it so here the text is the following the slam jam nike um class 997 in black so it's set to release at slam jam um the only 97 pairs available before a limited runner arrives at nike sneakers platform the raffle will run from november 9th to 28th uh, the launch event will be at los in los angeles and it'll fe to feature the the what do you call them hardcore what do you call them um what do you call them death call death metal i don't know whatever, however you call horror um they are going to perform at the show on November, what is that? A secret event featuring horror. So this is the event here they're going to have on the 9th of November. And this video actually got me pretty hyped. So they're doing this in LA as well, which is again cool, isn't it? A shop based in Italy is launching, is doing a second club, or, you know, collaborating with Nike and launching a shoe in LA. So I think it's pretty cool. This video really got me hyped. So it's basically a montage of horror playing some show somewhere loads of donuts in a bit of a parking lot some guys putting up fly posters loads of real cool la scenery videos loads of debauchery and you know crazy activities probably going on while this is happening but yeah slam jam commonwealth projects horror playing class 97 night dunks or a blazer sorry so check that out if you're around the la area and grab yourself a pair and yeah man Really cool collaboration. I like them. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I think of for all the stuff out there that I complain about, I think these are again one of the best out at the moment. Again, you know, I'm biased. I like black and white trainers, but you know, shoot me. What can you do?